Mary of Magdala when running to the synagogue and she told Peter and the apostles, I went to the tomb and the Lord is not there. Somebody took him. Peter and John left the synagogue and went running to the tomb and we see that John overran Peter and came and peered in but he did not enter. And then Peter arrived, he went in, he saw the wrapping and the napkin apart and they believed what Mary Mother, mother had told him. When John went in, he saw and believed. How many of you fathers, mothers, have chased your sons or daughter, maybe take a little bit of the fun by trying to raise one another? And if I ask you who was the winner, I know the answer. Your children. Because unfortunately, we are little old geezers. <laughs> and that's what happened with Peter and John. John was younger, ran, and came in two before Peter. But he never left him. The author of the book, of the Acts of the Apostles, Luke, is doing that and he's saying that for a purpose. And the purpose is that he gives the, the private to Peter. Because it was Peter who in today's first reading spoke to us as he spoke on the day of Pentecost. He said, Pentecost? Yeah. That sermon that you heard in the first reading is the word of St. Peter on the day of Pentecost. When the Holy Spirit come to them and they went out full of strength and courage to proclaim what Peter said. All, all of you have heard what happened about Jesus of Nazareth, how he was revealed by God and humanity, and how from the time he entered the Jordan, that means his installation by God the Father, when he said the Father, this is my son, on whom my favor rests, how he went around preaching, and how many become angry at his words, and how they put him to death, and how his death was not the end of him, because he is alive, and we are witness of this resurrection. If you want to save yourselves, believe in him. And if you believe in him, you will have life, and life eternal. But first we have to repent, because we have put our Lord to the tree. We have crucified him. Now we need to repent of what we have done so that we can have that promise of eternal life. And that sermon has been preached for over 2,012 years and will continue to be preached to the end of the world because that is the mystery of what we are celebrating today. And that's why today when I read the second reading, I really see that the teaching of the church is so wise to us and remind us that our journey is not complete. And our destination is heaven. And that's why St. Paul said, fix your eyes on Jesus. Because nothing in this life will matter. But our destination at the end will matter because that is our eternity with God. I can be a doctor, I can be a priest, I can be a bishop, I can be a lawyer, whoever, whatever it is. That accomplishment is good because you have achieved the goal for which you live, in fact, the state of life. But without Jesus, you are nothing. You say a priest, with, a priest without Jesus? Sometimes yes. Sometimes we go to the rhythm. Sometimes we 
go to the waves. If you don't have a personal relation with Jesus, you are going to fail. You are going to fall. And that's why today I like to speak to you about this relationship with Jesus. Because this relationship is going to determine your peace in your life. It's going to determine how much you are going to be forgiven and how much when you come to the throne of mercy you are going to receive that mercy. Our faith is not Easter and Christmas. Our faith is a relationship. I call it a lifestyle. And so things that are not godly, that are not pleasing to God, you need to let go if you want to arrive at your destination. If I am going to Atlantic City, I cannot take the road to Route 70 because I will end the market. If I want to go someplace, I need to follow that destination. If we want to arrive at Jesus, at the right hand of the Father, where he is, I need to do those things that he asked of me to do. And that is to believe in him, the one who come into life, and to accept his message. And anything that is not his message, I will try to take away from my life. And that's why when I see, you know, that we celebrate Easter, Easter is 40 days prior. That's why the church was 40 days of Lent. Because in Lent, we celebrate and prepare to the readings of the church what Easter is all about. Easter is about the love of God that was shown to us through His Son that accept even the death on the cross and by His death and burial and by His resurrection you and I have been saved. You and I have been justified. You and I have a, have a destination to go. And that's why today we're going to profess uh, the promise of baptism. That's what the church is going to say. After we have journeyed through that, after we have prayed through the scriptures, after we have made penance to discipline this flesh, to discipline this body. If not, if we don't discipline this flesh, my dear people, you are going to be in trouble. It's not good for, but it's good for you to take it because you are asking for trouble. This body needs to be put and mastered because otherwise you are going to fall. That's why Jesus says at the last, at the last day on the face of the earth, when he prayed to the Father, take away this chalice from me. Not my will, but yours be done. And we see, you see what I have? And you see that uh, that is the message that we have. That we need to understand that. That that message is very important and is the unique way how to go to the Father. My dear people, Jesus said, the Spirit is willing. But the nature is very weak, and believe me, I speak for myself. I want to do good, but I found myself doing what is not good. Sometimes, you know, I am busy doing something, and there is a call, I take it because they call you that you have to take it, and sometimes I am not very pleasant. And that is my normal way. But I have, I have a trick for my madness. Because some of these people who do not read the bulletins, do not read things that we publish in the, in the, in the uh, calendars, I don't think that they understand the importance of what to be a church. A church is not just when are you going to give the power. It's not, is there any ashes? It's not when I am going to sit in the leaves. It's not just the point that that's how beautiful. But a relationship with the Lord Jesus. I get very disturbed when people after 12 years of Catholic education, they are so naive in their faith. I don't know what happened. 
in the process. I don't know what happened. Father, I want to get married. That's wonderful. See the danger. He marry you. He marry everybody. <laughs> You don't go to church, don't feel them, father looks at me, or more and asks me. Because I am not performing pagan rituals. I am performing a sacrament that involves relationship with Jesus Christ. That's why many marriages and many things fail, because we take the most element of what we're supposed to do from the equation. And that is Jesus. That's why we see marriages today falling apart. Because there is no presence of Jesus there. They don't have a relationship with him. Sunday mess for them is a boring. Do I have to go? Well, after all, God understands. Today is a nice day that go to the shore. Oh, there is, there is, there is basketball. They invent everything. They find all kinds of excuses. But what the things they like to do, oh my dear Lord, they will change schedule, they will do all kinds of things that they imagine to do, even if they have to walk to the stadium themselves. Because we say it in a very special way. Where the heart is, the feet will follow. And that's very important. That's good that you have those, those inclinations. But put God number one in your life. That's the most important essence that you have. If you want true peace, have relationship with Jesus Christ. How are you going to build a relationship? First and foremost, it's not just once a week and how long he's going to preach so I can live early or things to do. But the first relation means that you have time set apart every day. Well, yes, I pray, Father, when I am driving. But then when somebody brought me or do something, oh my God, what I say about that man. <laughs> it's horrible when you are driving and you are sensitive and somebody brought. I mean, you are going to be an accident. I understand that you get a little bit deterred. But that is not time of prayer. Prayer is, for example, you go to out of the house at 6.30. So wake up from 5.30, take your shower, do what you do, and spend 10 minutes in a corner of the room where nobody bother you, open the scripture, read it, and talk to God like you talk to your best friend. Maybe you can make mass at lunchtime or in the evening, whatever mass is. Maybe you gather the people, your family together, as a husband, as a wife, for the rosary every night. We miss these things. You think these things are something of the past? Well, that's what kept the family together in the past. The family that prays together, stay, stay together. And today, the family does not pray together, divide, uh, separate itself, etc. My dear people, we are not, you know, bad people. We are good people. But for the love of God, listen to Jesus' message. If you love me, keep my commands. And what are the commands? Sunday Mass. Every Sunday, when we come to Mass, we celebrate Easter. Do you know that? Every single Sunday, when we come to Mass, we celebrate Easter. Today, we celebrate with great solemnity. But every Sunday, at that order, Jesus dies. And he unites himself together at the before communion to be given to us as the resurrected Jesus. And the words, this is my body, this is my blood, the separation of the two uh, uh, species, identify the death of Christ. Before communion, the priest break the holes, put it in the chalice, and then he unites Jesus again together as a glorious Jesus, not as a corpse to be given to us as the living bread. Do the best you can to put Sunday Mass or Saturday night as the goal of your week. And you will see what a difference it makes in 
your life. You think I'm lying to you? You just give it a try. You stay a month without going to mass, and you say, what a pandemonium you have, stay. But then you, you, you go to mass for a, for a month, and you see what a difference it makes. Why? Because that is what God do. God give us so much blessing. Because He expects of us that He who loves us so much that we love Him in return. Yesterday, for those who are in the vision, that's what we say. Well, after God created everything, He created you and I. And in each one of us, He gave His own image. And He loved us so much that He wants a relationship. And that's why He sent Jesus, His very personal Son, to make a personal relation with us. Even the church and our administration of the settlement is a personal church. We don't go and grab the host. We minister the host to each other. I cannot baptize myself. I cannot, you know, confirm myself. Why? Because the church, through Jesus, to become one of us, wants to make us a personal and a communion together. And this is why Easter is so beautiful. Because Easter is the destruction of Satan. Satan has been defeated. And he is there at the, at the foot of the cross, chained for all eternity. But he is still trying to take you over. And he is trying to do the best to take you away from Jesus. And so he is showing you the car. The substance, the alcohol, the sure, the sports, anything that he can do to alienate you from Jesus. And when you alienate, you divide, you divide, you divide yourself, you, you astray yourself from the road. And that's why this Easter is a commitment to that Jesus that we love so much. I ask you, when you are going to make the promise of baptism, to really mean what you are going to say. And ask the Lord to help you to stay away from any glamour of, of the devil, and the works of evil. And there is a lot of works of evil today, whether it is in the media, whether it is in our technology, whether it is in the people, whether it is in the culture that we are in, the culture of death. Many folks have spoken about it, even our present Pope. We cannot continue in this way. When the family is killing their very existence of what they exist, because a child is the effect of love between husband and wife, we are going to see, we are going to see destruction in the family. That's why I pray today that really the Easter season that we are in now will bless us and recommit us again to the Lord. I wish on behalf of Deacon Carlucci, the sisters of our community, the staff of the rectory, a blessed Easter to you and your loved ones. And may the blessing that we are going to share together you bring it to the table and give it to your people. And pray for them, especially those that I call them in my book, and the pagans, those who are away from the Lord Jesus. Pray for them. Pray for them, because if you are a mother and a father, you don't want your son to be lost for eternity. The greatest gift that you have is to cooperate with God to bring them in this life. And now they are lended to you, make sure that you return them to God. Pray for them constantly, make sacrifices for them. And once in a while, speak to them. Put something under their pillow. Maybe you exchange some food or something when you give the clean dishes, put a little card there or something to remind them. To remind them. Because God speaks in different ways. I promise you, as Jesus said, if you save one soul, yours 
is saved. I will work very hard for that. I hope I did save myself. So that I will be merciful. I will show, I, they show mercy to me when I arrive at the door of the Holy Spirit. Again, my word to you is what St. Paul said. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Because that is your destiny.